Welcome to Riding Tandem, a podcast about building businesses, leadership, and creating positive impact for our communities. I'm your host, Vivian Kavam, and I invite you to ride tandem with me as I have candid conversations with inspiring business owners, leaders, and experts who are building on their dreams and creating impact. Get ready to be encouraged and learn practical tactics to help us build successful businesses, become incredible leaders, and have positive ripple effect. Let's go. Well, welcome back to this episode of Writing Tandem. Excited, as always, for our guest today. I have today Shannon Jackson, and she has such an inspiring story, a really awesome personality. Met her, and before this podcast, I would just want to say that she is just full of grit and determination. She's the first African-American woman to own a barbershop in the Omaha Benson area in Nebraska. She was born and raised in Omaha, so she's a native of the Midwest area here, and she's not only a successful business owner, I would also like to say that she's a creative thinker and conversations I've had with her in the past, which have been amazing. Love conversations in the past. (laughs) She's also a gun violence survivor, which is a very interesting story that I'm sure we'll dive into here. And also a teacher, and as I, I love how she put this in her bio, and most importantly, a student for life. So welcome. Absolutely. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is great. So before we dive into all the the great details and juiciness here, you had a recent big first. Last week, was it? Yes, you did yes, a... yes. My first celebrity haircut. Yeah. Yes, yes. So that was my big first. Um, his manager reached out to me on Instagram and was like, hey, I'm coming in with a tour. I have an artist who needs a haircut. And I keep researching Omaha Barbers, and you keep popping up. You keep Mm -hmm. popping up. So I'm going with you, and I'm like, thank you. I'll be honored. So I'm like, how many people? You know, I'm asking my general questions. And she's like, just one. And then she adds him, and I go to his page. I'm like, oh, my God, it's Eric Bellinger. Like, I know this guy. (laughs) Like, I found out later on that he writes for a lot of big-time artists like Chris Brown, Justin Bieber. He works with Usher a lot. So it was super dope, and he was super humble. Definitely a um, very nerve-wracking experience. Was but it? It was good. It was great. When he left the chair, he said, I'm definitely coming back to Omaha. When I come back, I'm coming to you. Really? So that was that was success for me. What a compliment. <laughs> right, right. I also love that when they were searching, you kept popping up. I mean, that says a lot about what you're doing, even just from a marketing perspective. Oh, yeah. Social media. That's why I'm like, let me record just a little bit now so I can post because social media, I've learned, it brings you the crowd that you need. And a lot of times... Business owners expect people closest to them to support them the most, but what really happens is is strangers. Yeah. That support you, for sure. Even celebrity strangers. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Right? (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. So social media and marketing is like the thing now. So I've been really, 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 really on it. I've applied a lot of pressure when I'm social media, social media-ing, I should say, and I'm Mm -hmm. posting and reposting. I go all the way from um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, even the neighbor's app, the next door app. I mean, even like ring, you know, that's yeah. the camera system. Like mm-hmm. you can put a lot of things everywhere. So how do you find where you want to put things like like those? I mean, everyone thinks Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, but like ring. How'd you figure that one out? Um, I figured out random ones like ring or even like um, the next door app, mm-hmm. because that's where a lot of neighbors talk about a lot in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. So I figure why not also use it as a platform to advertise a business in this neighborhood? Mm-hmm. Because every time you go on apps like that, a lot of times it's crazy stuff going on. Like somebody robbed me. and My cat. Yeah. <laughs> my dog is lost. Have you found? I'm like, hey, if you need a haircut, you know. Yeah. And it's been working. I get a lot of uh, people who hit me up on there and ask questions like, oh, my God, where's your shop at? Or I have people coming into town who's like, oh, my God, I just got on here to check the crime rate. And I seen that you have a barbershop. Like, <laughs> And what raccoons are doing right. these days. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, I kind of find it by uh, word of mouth more than anything is what's really been telling me to try to just use the Internet, just use those platforms. Mm-hmm. And um, anytime people mention, like, have you had this app? Have you tried this app? I always try to be open-minded to trying new apps. Mm-hmm. My phone is full of them. There's even some I haven't really explored yet because there's so many social media platforms. Mm-hmm. So many. I thought it was the main, like you said, the Snapchat, the Facebook, the Instagram, no, mm-hmm. absolutely not. It's it's probably a good 15 that'll get you clients for your business. Do you manage all of that yourself? Yes. Woo. 
<laughs> right. Man. Yes. Now, I um I do have now set up recently this year where the people who also work in my shop, the barbers, cosmetologists, even the tattoo artists, they have access to log in and post on these social medias. Mm. I don't force them to, of course. I just give them the option. I'm like, hey, if you want to promote yourself personally, because I promote the entire business, then here's the logins. Get on here. It's even connected to their phones. I'm like, get on here. Post your information. They'll come to you because they're coming to me. So I'm giving you the example yeah. of what it means when you do use those to perform to um, promote. Yeah. It works. That's awesome. Okay, little deviation here. I'm just curious. Yeah. So if you could attract any celebrity client through your social media marketing, have you ever thought about that? Like, do you have a short list of a dream oh, to yeah. have in my chair would be? Absolutely. So my, my first number one would be Jay-Z. Oh, yeah. Jay-Z, I mean, billionaire, one of the first hip-hop artist billionaires, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, he's also married to Beyonce. I mean, the connections there is probably unlimited. Jay-Z, most definitely, um, it's so many of T.I., mm -hmm. Jay-Z, T.I., Tim's. I mean, I could list I could list so many. And Tim's is actually, she probably would get her hair done by Aaliyah, my wife. But okay. just, just having to reach to people like that, it's kind of like their music and their connections would be... I connect with them through their music. So by meeting them in person, I feel like it would be a different connection as well. Yeah. You you name a lot of music artists. Music a thing for you? Oh, yes. Love music. I love music. My um, my whole shop, like the decorations in my shop are all based off of like the greatest musicians. Mm -hmm. um, mainly it's R&B, hip hop and soul and jazz is what I really have posted everywhere. That's just something I was raised on. Mm -hmm. A lot of good quality music. Yeah. So you've got to have that going when someone walks in. They're hearing some good music. Oh, absolutely. Every time. Every single time. And not like, I try to keep it appropriate, but I always try to keep it soulful where it's music that when you hear it, you can feel it. Mm -hmm. That's the music that I... Do you ever people who just like won't leave? They're like, the vibe's so good here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or I have a lot of clients who, it's not that they won't leave, but they'll just pop up randomly even when they don't have an appointment. Like, mm -hmm. hey, Shan, I just came in to see you. Where's everybody? How's everybody doing? Mm -hmm. Especially with everything that happened after my accident. With yeah. the shooting, it was a lot of people who were popping up like, hey, I'm just bringing you flowers. I'm just bringing you a card. I'm just telling you that, hey, you made it. I'm happy for you. It was like. That's awesome. It was like a visit. Yeah, it was It was beautiful. It makes me think, okay, so I'm totally pulling from like movie cliches, but of the barber shop, like everything you oh, yeah. describe, it's like the neighborhood. <laughs> I mean, you're using neighborhood apps and it has this neighborhood feel with great music, a place mm -hmm. for people to stop by. But in your words, what is your philosophy and vision behind the barbershop so behind i'll say the barbershop not and not in particularly my barbershop but i'll say barbershops in general community is definitely number one mm -hmm. community is number one just because um what it means to be a barber to a lot of us who are very passionate about it it's changing lives we're there for your wedding we're there for your funerals we're there for your your first I mean, your your son's first haircut, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The first time your wife decides to shave her hair off. Mm. I mean, like when you go to a job interview, when you get out of the hospital, even, you know, some of us are mobile. We'll, we've come to the hospital to help people and cut their hair and take care of them and stuff like that. So it's being there for people in your community and being there for their big moments mm -hmm. because it's like a haircut can change someone's life. Mm. It does every day, actually. It does. It definitely does. So it's, it's a confidence booster. Um, it's something that puts a smile on people's face. So it means for me, it really means the culture of the community and taking care of the community. Mm. And there's, you know, you were talking about this before we got on here, just the misconception. And my sister also does hair, cosmetology, school, you know, and there was, to be just candid about it, a lot of people say it's not a real job. Like it's not a real career. It's so crazy how many times we hear that. So like the the very first time I heard that, you know, I used to be a kitchen cutter. So I started off by cutting like my brothers and my dad and my cousins in the in the kitchen or in the basement at my mom's house. And um, it was like something that was frowned upon by a lot of people who are more corporate or a lot of people or, or individuals, I'll say, who don't take our industry seriously. Mm. Um, they say that it's not really a career. But what's crazy is that in the field that I am in, we make a lot more money than I think it's over 60 percent of careers in the United States. Really? Because it's such a growing industry right now, especially from hair to makeup to esthetician. I mean, barbering. I mean, there's so much we can do in our field. It's extremely a professional, <laughs> mm -hmm. extremely. And we have options to control how professional we are, which I feel like 
also can be looked at as a good thing or a bad thing. And it can kind of support how some people say it's not really a career because of how some people are in the professional sense. Someone, some people have no sense of professionalism in our field because they're so free. They're so free. Mm. There's so much freedom to make your own schedule. There's freedom to do what you want to do. There are shops who will refuse people who have certain hair textures just because they have the freedom to. Mm -hmm. There's no one there that's like, hey, you have to cut everybody's hair. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In my shop in particular, we cut everybody's hair. I don't care if you're from east, west, north, south. I don't care if you barely have hair or if you have a lot of hair. We we are all trained as professionals and we have our license to cut every texture hair. So I also hate the the stigma that's attached to that, that, you know, Mm -hmm. But it comes from a lot of people that I'll say are stuck and they place that career in a box. So, you know, with everything, we have our goods and our bads with every career. But this one here, how we take it, very serious, very serious. What do you think are, you mentioned a couple, but just to put a pin in it, I think, what do you think are some of the differentiators of what, what, what you've done with heavy hitters as far as making it that professional vibe that you want? Oh, boundaries, setting boundaries. Um, I've learned that setting boundaries in business is extremely important, extremely important. So it's kind of like before someone comes into my shop to work there, we have a conversation. The conversation is what they don't know is it is about boundaries, Mm -hmm. but it will appear that we're just having a general, oh, how old are you? How long have you been in this field? How do you? Because I want to see how people operate professionally. And in our industry, it's a lot of people who, and and I'll say this, for me, myself, learning throughout the years, I was also guilty of not taking it seriously and not being professional. So I kind of put myself in that position to learn and grow from it. That's why I know it so well, because I was once in that where it was like, this is just something I'm going to just, you know, it's a cool job to have to cut hair, Mm. look cool, dress cool. You know what I mean? Like. Different but, colors sometimes. Yeah, color hair. get yeah. crazy with your hair. Yeah. But I'm like, this is a business. So you have to have principles and you have to have boundaries. So with sitting down with people before they start in the shop, the boundaries that I'm really focused on most of the time are how do you communicate? Are you a good communicator? Are you on time? Do you show up for appointments? Mm. I mean, there's so many things that are just black and white basic. So it it takes a lot of work professionally to be able to read that in people. But once you see it, you see it. So most definitely boundaries and um, professionalism, just communication. It's crazy because just communication and time, just those two. Right. (laughs) For a lot of people in our field, they don't take either seriously. Mm -hmm. They do not. So it's like you're not communicating with people when you're going to be late. You're not communicating with people when there's something wrong. Your people are showing up looking for you and you're not here. You're not on time. It's just, for me, that's basic. Yeah. That is really interesting. It makes me think of early on in my experience being in the photography world. I think there's a lot of correlations there. It's a very creative, free flowing type of career that many can have. And, you know, it, it was interesting. One of our big differentiators was we asked the questions. We had forms. We did show up. We were prepared ahead and anticipating needs. And um, not to knock it, I guess, but there are a lot of photographers out there that are a little more what I would call willy-nilly. Like they just sort of show up and they do their thing and you'll get your photos when you get your photos and it's not real clear. You know, like there's no clarity. There's no due dates, deadlines. And it, it leaves a lot of unmet expectations and un, undefined undefined expectations really. oh yeah oh yeah, yeah. so I, I can relate there I was like oh yeah mm-hmm. yep, been there <laughs> yep yep and then when you when you are the one who run you run your business with those standards of being on time and respecting each other's time and stuff like that when you run into customers or clients who are not used to that they are so surprised blown away they're like oh my wait you can get my pictures back to me today mm-hmm. are you serious mm-hmm. Are you sure? Like what? You scheduled a haircut for 8.30 a.m. and you're here at 8.15 a.m.? What? Yeah. Like it's so crazy. It's crazy. And you think in your mind, you're like, it's such a small thing, but it's huge. It's respectful. And when people are respected, they feel valued. I had a guest on before and, you know, some of the things he talks about is valued, appreciated, respected, and heard. Mm. And Mm -hmm. that's that's really what you're talking about in many ways. That you heard, I want my appointment at 10. I will be there. (laughs) Absolutely. Talk to us a little bit about what are what are some of the services and um, like what would I encounter when I come in the door there? What 
does Heavy Hitters provide? And you've mentioned already you have a couple of people who work out of that space. So what does it look like there? Absolutely. So Heavy Hitters, um, when you first walk in, immediately you feel the energy. Immediately you see the, the first thing that I always make sure is relevant is the smell mm. and the cleanliness. Because when you walk into a place and it smells good and it's clean, you automatically is going to identify that with positivity. That's not you're not going to walk in there like, oh, my God, I feel uncomfortable. You know, that's so comfort, I guess, comes with smell and the cleanliness comfort. Um, we have a cosmetologist, Aaliyah, who is licensed cosmetologist. She's also a makeup artist and she's a model. She has a contract with Develop um, Model Management, who also runs um, Omaha Fashion Week. So she's well versed and connected with the world of beauty for sure. Mm. Um, there's me, Shan, there's Neek, there's Trail, and then there's Javon. So there's four licensed barbers. Out of the four, two of us are, no, three of us actually are master barbers, and um, which means that we completed uh, longer hours. Okay. So we're master barbers, and then Neek also just finished all her hours for becoming a barber instructor. So we all are licensed to cut, but we're also licensed to color. We do two-strand twists. We do braids. We do locks. It's just, excuse me, it's a variety of services. And with the freedom you have in barber school from what you're learning, like you learn manicures, pedicures, you learn so much. So we're licensed to do a lot. Facials, mm. women facials, women haircuts, designs, kid haircuts. It's a lot. And then um, following that, we also have Jazz. Now, Jazz is... Um, our tattoo artist, who's also licensed for years. She's coming back next week, so we're excited to have her back. She just had a baby. Oh, fine. So, yeah, we're excited to have her back in. And um, right now we're doing a little bit of reconstruction and remodeling, and I'll be having about two more open chairs for barbers coming up soon. So providing, there's a laundry list of services that we provide for sure, um, from licensed cosmetologists to licensed barbering to tattooing. And um, I just want people who come in to see and understand that we are for the community and we're for our clients. Regardless of everything going on outside the doors, when you come in, this is a place you come and get service. We're going to be professional. We're going to give you what you're asking for, and we're going to communicate with you what it is that you came here for. So it's it's a vibe, what we call it nowadays. It's a vibe when you walk in, for yeah. sure. <laughs> I do like the word vibe, and it's funny you say that because I, I have thought, you know, 40 years from now, are people going to look back and be like, <laughs> my mom and dad said vibe. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they are. They are. But we still use things like, you know, cool and that's tight. And, yeah. you know, I mean, there's so many recycled words. But I think right now, energy and vibe are mm. two big words that are associated with positive things. So we just try to highlight those. I think it's I think it's one that should stick around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be a grandma saying vibe. That's right. That's right. <laughs> when did this dream start? Oh, my God. Um, so I was probably three or four years old the first time that I got in trouble for cutting hair. Mm -hmm. And I shaved my teddy bear. Mm. <laughs> and my mom found out because, of course, you shave a teddy bear. I mean, there's fur everywhere. And I'm still playing with what's left on his head. And my mom was like, what? <laughs> what happened here? I'm like, I cut his hair. I'm trying to let it grow back, you know, <laughs> as a kid. So that's kind of where it started. Uh, when I got into my early teenage years, I'll say about between 11 and 13, we had a cousin who used to come over, and shout out to Pig. That's the one who taught me how to cut hair. Uh, he used to come over, and he used to cut my brother's hair all the time. And um, at the time, I would just sit back and watch because I was just so infatuated by just watching. I'm like, wow, you're holding this tool, and it's just cutting hair off, and you're making it look nice, and you're cleaning up their edges, and you're fading it. So after a while of him sitting there watching me watch him, he's like, you really are into this, aren't you? I'm like, yeah. He's like, let me show you some stuff. So he started showing me by the time. He started showing me from when we were in junior high. By the time early high school, then I was taking over the haircuts. And my mom was like, oh, yeah, you get in there and cut your brother's hair. So I was in there cutting their hair. So throughout high school, um, it really spiked because a lot of kids in high school, you know, when you're trying to be a cool kid and you see somebody line up and it's nice, you're like, who cut your hair? My brother's like, my sister did, my sister did. So they started coming over to our house, letting me cut their hair. The dream really was like most of my childhood, for sure, for sure. At one point, I just wanted to switch it up and go to UNO for a bachelor's. That's when it kind of took a pause. But the dream never stopped. Mm -hmm. It was always in the back of my head, like, you love cutting hair. What are you trying other things for? It was just, I don't know. I don't know. One of those things in life where you got to try other stuff. Mm -hmm. So then how did it come together? Oh, so I finished my bachelor's degree at UNO in psychology, and um, I went into the field of working with kids who had, like, um, it was a dual diagnosis center. 
So they had mental health issues. And they also, a lot of them had like drug problems, drug addiction problems, I should say. Mm -hmm. And one of the kids there was sitting there and he was like, yo, I, I hate that y'all take us to sports clips. They always mess my hair up. Da, da, da. <laughs> and I was talking to the guy and I was like, are you okay if I cut his hair? Because, you know, in places, in facilities with children, that's a lot of times it's hands off. Mm -hmm. So they ran it through the... Um, to the manager or the site site director, and he was like, "Yeah, go ahead, just try it." So then I was like, starting to cut the kids' hair in the facility. Yeah, I couldn't do too many. It was every blue moon. I would just do a couple of them, but my love for it started to come back because of seeing their response. Mm. So their responses to it was like, "Oh my gosh, Shan, you really lined me up. You made my hair look so good." So seeing the joy on their face was like, "Wow, I still, I still got it. Like I'm still, you know." And at that time. I didn't even really consider barber school or anything. This is when I was like in my mid-20s. So I ended up going after becoming a personal trainer because I've always loved to work out. That didn't really work out. I didn't really keep my the drive behind it. didn't stay there. So I went to my mom one day and I was like, Mom, I'm going to go to school and I'm going to get my master's because I now want to become a therapist. Hmm. So I went back to, I got approved into UNO's master program and I don't even think I actually started. Really? <laughs> I didn't even start. the. I think it was week one. And I went down with the to the advisor's office and I was getting my schedule printed off. And I just had like a just a, a moment, just a, a moment with God in that moment. And I was like, this is just not I don't feel this. Mm. So I went back to my mom and I'm like, Mom, I'm going to barber school. It just keeps calling me. She's like, what? You're supposed to be getting your master's. You just told me you wanted to. A week later, I was admitted into the barber school and I was moving out to Lincoln. And that going to school in Lincoln was the first school in my life where I had straight A's and everything. Really? Where my focus was tuned in everything. When I came time for me to learn anything about cutting hair, I was like zoomed in. I was like, wow, this is it. It was really your zone. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Till this day. Still, like, I can watch a barber video and be like, oh, my God, look at the, look at the. <laughs> you know, like, it's just so intriguing to me. It's always been something. Do you get stuck on TikTok? Oh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I was just thinking that. Absolutely. I'm like, you could just scroll through that for days. And it is yeah. memori memorizing. Yes. To watch, like you said, like the hair is just kind of in its shape. Yeah. It's like painting. It's just magical. Yes. Absolutely. Yes, yes. I like to paint too. That's crazy. And I like to draw. Do you? Yep. It's I'm it's an surprised. it's an art thing. It, it is. really is. It's just defining the lines. I even like cutting grass. Like it's really, My it's husband really too. a thing. <laughs> He was like, it's great. Just put my headphones on. Just get the line. Yes. You know? Yes. I love trying to do the basket, you know, trying to get the corners all clean. It's just, I think it's an art of, um, I don't know. I don't know what to call it outside of barbering and cutting hair, but it's something to do with straight lines and detail. Yeah. It really is. It's got to be a kind of a wild mashup between, there is that artist, like, kind of creativity could go anywhere, but there's also a science to it of... Mm -hmm. I mean, there's the chemistry piece, understanding, like, how things are going to mix and come together. But then you've got a lot of, like, symmetry and geometry. I mean, there's oh, a yes. lot going on there. Oh, yes. Especially when you get into specialty cuts, what some people call, um, like, bald fades or, um, you know, tapered blends and stuff like that. There, there are a lot of different haircuts. A lot. I mean, from the shag to the classic boosie fade, which is like, I mean, you could high and tight, military cut. There's so many different haircuts and then with different textures you have to cut them differently and use different tools but um ultimately it's a system too mm. so you can't just go at it like I know what I'm doing let me just mm -hmm. there's a system like I, I sit down and I look at the head before I'm cutting it and I'm like okay your head is round right here it's flat right here your hairline looks like this like let's talk about what you expect in this haircut and then let me tell you what I can give you mm -hmm. and I like, feel like that's why a lot of people return because they know I'm listening right Super important and being realistic. Too. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. Like, well, you know. Yeah, I can't I can't make you look like him, but <laughs> <laughs> for real. So how did I had the opportunity to come in and be in the barbershop first meeting with you and doing some photos and some getting a profile together. And it's a great space. But in talking there with you, you have a great story of just how it came together and challenges you overcame and. Can you just walk walk us through that? Like, would you share that story with us? Again? Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. So before having this um, shop that I have now, I had a partner and we had an old shop. So at the old shop, um, and me and him, we rocked it out for three and a half, almost four years together. It was, it was a dope experience. We learned a lot. We grew a lot. And I ended up veering off and saying, you know, I want to do my own thing. And he was completely cool with it, so it worked out. Um, with doing my own thing, what I had to realize is that 
this new shop that I wanted to create, I had an image for it. This image for it included certain colors, certain shapes, certain chairs. I wanted a TV. I wanted a speaker. I wanted a vending machine. There were so many things that I wanted. And I realized that I could sit back and spend every dime that I have on getting this and making this dream happen. But one of my clients at the time told me that she works for the bank and she knew another guy who worked for, um, not Nebraska Enterprise Fund, but he worked for someone who worked basically getting connected through my clients. Mm -hmm. So she connected me with him. And I'm like, hey, you know, I'm trying to meet up with, I hear about Nebraska Enterprise Fund. Tell me more about it. I want to get to know if I am if I qualify to receive funding. Because if I can get funding and also put in my own, then, then this dream can start off becoming what I picture it to be. Mm. So um, I ended up calling the guy and I'm like, hey, I heard about you. I heard you work for Nebraska Enterprise Fund. I want to set up a meeting with you. So what's crazy is we set up a meeting like a week after that call. But the next day, his son came into the shop and I was doing his son's hair. And I had no idea. <laughs> I had no idea that it was him until he came in. The father came in and he was like, you're Shannon, right? I was like, yeah. He was like, he's like, I was just talking to you yesterday. I'm like, wait, what? He's like, yeah, I'm the one who you was talking to. I'm Tyrone, the one who works for Nebraska Enterprise. I said, what? Oh, my God. Omaha is so small. Mm -hmm. He's like, yeah, I recognize who you were when you were on the phone. And you were telling me where you're currently working and what you're trying to do. He was like, I can definitely help you. Let me just give you this list of requirements, break things down to you and tell you what you need, how you need to get it. And he was so, so helpful with everything. He made it really a smooth process. The same girl who connected me with his friend, she was the one who also was making business plans. Mm. So I got back in contact with her, me and her talking. We're sitting down. We're working on a business plan. We're working on all these requirements. That was the stressful part. I'm not going to lie, but, mm. but it was worth every bit of it for sure. Um, she currently moved. She's currently living overseas with her husband. He's military. So she got out of here after that. But um, shout out to Alex. She she did her thing for sure. She um she really helped me and made it made it a lot easier on me. I can tell it was a lot harder on her, especially when it came down to like she had to crunch my numbers, make sure it was something that I could prove that I could afford. And, you know, mm -hmm. almost like a loan application. Pretty, I mean, that's pretty much what it was. But it, it all the details were inside of a business plan. So I, now I have a business plan that came from that. Also received funding from Nebraska Enterprise funding and it changed my entire life and outlook on business because it really made me sit back and shut up <laughs> and actually iron out the details and I there was no way you could rush it so by it not being by me not being able to rush it it really made me sit down focus and learn and be like yo this is something I really have to do the right way or I'm not going to get what I need to get so the dream the energy I had behind me and the dream was the same energy I gave to being patient and building that business plan with her so that was oh just talking about it yeah <laughs> that was a huge process um how long did it take do you remember we started the process of making the business plan in october october of 20 yeah october of 20 was it 20 where were we at we 23 from 23 wow october of 21 is when we started making the business plan um me and her took about three months and and she definitely did a lot more than I did, but but me and her both took about three months to finish all the details. Once we applied for everything and submitted the business plan, I think it might have took not even a full two months, not even a full two months for me to get fully approved and cashed out and everything. And I just started ordering stuff for the shop. I had a whole list. I had like a like a vision board of lists on my wall, like, yo, this is the vision that I have for this shop, and these are the things I'm going to get. Once I got approved, jumping for joy, called my mom, was like, we're about to get started. And it was beautiful. It was it was definitely a day to remember, for sure. That's really cool. It was 2-2 two, two of 22. Oh, fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the day that we got everything approved. It was February 2nd of 2022. That's awesome. I was like, them twos, you know, I believe in numbers. <laughs> I love your story. It gives me goosebumps. Thank you. Every time, every time you share, I'm like, yeah, yeah. so crazy. So neat crazy you mentioned that it made you slow down mm -hmm. what are you kind of talking about there it made you slow down because you had to get all the processing of that done what do you think would have been different maybe as in, if you hadn't slowed down if I hadn't slowed down I think I would have made a lot more mistakes in the process of switching to a new shop and I could have honestly jeopardized getting the entire shop mm -hmm. because when it came to my business plan it not only was it for Nebraska Enterprise funding but it also was for my commercial leasing agent they needed to see a business plan. They needed to see proof of me being a business owner in order for me to lease that space. 
So there were certain steps I had to take and do them right in order to get everything approved. And I really feel like if I would have rushed or I would have sped through a lot of things or skipped over a lot, I would not have been taken seriously in a lot of instances. And it was good for me to slow down. It was really good. Because before that, if you think about, you know, barbershops or places that cut hair or places that do hair, when you walk in a lot of times, busy, 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 especially on the weekends. So I had gotten so used to the routine of being like, I got to get these haircuts done. 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes. So everything following that in life was always like 20 minutes. Like I need to get things done. I need to move, 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 move. Everything has always been so sped up for me in life. But I realized once I slow down, then things look a lot better and things are done right. So that helped me a lot. That's I love that you're talking about that. I feel like I'm going through that right now. Yeah. (laughs) Quite literally. I'm like, man, this is like a therapy session right now for me. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I've just really been working hard. You know, I had this New Year's resolution, not this year, but last year of I wanted to carry less things, literally physically, less bags and bottles and purses and backpacks and stuff. And I think what I was really trying to say in my head is I want to stop hurrying so much. Yes. I feel in a constant state of hurry because as a business owner, there's always the next thing coming. Oh, yeah. Or the thing to get done or the dream that you've got over here and maybe I could work on it today. And so I can absolutely relate to that of good things really happen, though, when I slow down. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, that's huge. It's it's even like I, I think I started learning the slow down process when it came to some of my difficult clients and slowing down when because, you know, I also do locks and twists and braids. So people who get services like that, who've had long hair for a long time, are very specific on how they want things to look mm. when the outcome is done. Now, a lot of people, I love it. I got a lot of support from the community and my clients who say I'm really good at what I do. But there also are those clients who will challenge me, but they are the ones who always keep me on my toes. They always keep me on my toes. So they're always double checking, going back in the mirror, looking back in the mirror, checking out the style, checking out what, wait, (laughs) Shan, can you just, this little part right here, do you think you can tighten it? And it's like, I've had probably 50% less of those interactions with clients who are picky when I slow down. Just slow down. That's all. Slow down and perfect it rather than rush it and have all these mistakes that you still have to go back and fix. Mm. Just do it right the first time. Do you find yourself saying no to things? Not necessarily like a client, but in order to slow down, in order to have the time with that client, do you find that you have to say no or eliminate things to manage your time? Absolutely. Yes. (laughs) The answer is no. You have to say <laughs> The answer is no. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, I have had to say no a lot lately. I've had to say no, and it's it's really for, like, yourself. You know, it's really things that you know you can't do, you don't need to do, you don't have time to do, but you normally will say yes to whoever it is, family, friends, business, whatever. But once you start saying no, that goes back to what I was saying earlier. It's helping you align boundaries for yourself. And that ties into mental health. Sure does. If you're saying yes to a million things when you know you only got time to do five things today, then there are going to be things that you slack on. There's going to be mistakes. And then you're going to be exhausted. And now you're mad. You got an attitude. You're feeling away about yourself because you didn't did it again. You know? <laughs> so it's like I, I had to start saying no to a lot of clients who are last minute, last minute errors, I'll say who want to call me, it's 12, can you get me in at 1230? And I know I have five appointments lined up. Mm -hmm. And each and every time I used to be like, just come in, I'll squeeze you in. But what that did for my business was it started to go against what I was telling you we stand for, being on time. Mm -hmm. Being on time, I absolutely hate people waiting on me. So being on time, especially when they're sitting in the chair or sitting in the waiting room, they came early, they're ready for their appointment. But I had to squeeze in my cousin or my brother or this other client. I'm like, I'm so sorry. And then I would get to the point where I even started giving up. Like, if you have to wait more than 15 minutes, you're getting a free haircut. Mm. But then that still, yet again, is taking away from me. Mm-hmm. It's continuing to take away from me. And now, once I have my own, it's taking away from my business. It's taking away from the financials. And it's moving all my appointments back. So it's, it's, it almost made me feel bad to keep saying yes when I know I needed to say no. It just I, So now that I say no, and no is a full sentence... <laughs> You do not have to explain yourself when you say no. You may feel like you're being mean in the beginning, but you really start to pay attention to how people treat you when you say no. And people who respect you and love you or even just respect you on a basic business level 
Okay, no, it's fine. I'll, I'll hit you up another time and see what works for you. It's the simple. Right. It's very simple. It's not personal, but you have to take care of you. So say no. Say no is right. Yeah. I just read that line that you said that no is a complete sentence. Yes. <laughs> I'm reading through a book right now that's been excellent. I'm not done with it yet, um, but it's called The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry. Mm. And hurry's like scratched out on the front. Yeah. Um, I might have to read that. <laughs> and I'm I'm really enjoying it. And it goes through sort of the history of how did we get to this state of hurry and I'm I love history and just process and thinking about things like that Mm -hmm. so I'm just eating this book up but I am finding myself very challenged with exactly that you know saying no and taking time and it's something we talk a lot about and I'm like I got to take a mirror and look in it and go okay like when I say that to a client I am I doing that too so that I can serve them well and time blocking and all the things so Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's that is a real interesting one. And I love how you tied in. It does affect our mental health so much. Oh, my God. And business owners carry a lot on their shoulders. <laughs> There's a lot stuffed between our ears that we're yes. thinking about. And then we're doing like we're in action, but our brains are going about yes. the next thing. And have you found a way that you like to stay, stay present with your client in the chair versus thinking about the next five or the... The, how you're going to tweak your business yeah. plan and absolutely conversation mm. conversation and I challenge myself now to remember things about my clients so what I've noticed and this is something that I started like late last year um, I started to challenge myself so I have clients who have children I have clients who have wives husbands other businesses jobs things they're working on jobs they're applying at interviews I always try to remember something really specific about that client so as soon as they come back Hey, how's your, how's your son John doing? Last time you came in, you told me that he's, you know, starting a program and he's going to play football. And they're like, what? <laughs> you remember? I'm like, absolutely. So by me challenging myself to make that client relevant for their time, it forces me to be consistent. Because I might see 100 people a day, but this client only seen me today. So they're going to remember the interaction they had with me automatically it's, it's a lot easier for them to remember oh I see my barber once every two weeks and she's Shan and she works here but for me if I'm seeing 100 people a week and I'm remembering something about you that's special mm-hmm. it's, it makes it unique it makes our relationship important so you know that it's not about money and I'm not here just to cut your hair I actually care about you like hey how'd that job interview go come on tell me the news you know what I mean I'm, I'm giving the energy mm-hmm. so I can create the vibe yeah it's it's very valuable Mm-hmm. you're valuing them and it's very magical I think in many ways and you know one of the things I love about an experience when I go in have my hair done is even the other stylists or people who are there they even sometimes remember things and I'm like man that's it's just really cool because like you said it does become a whole vibe at that point yes and it's like family too mm-hmm. family outside of family and then we are we are therapists Yes. Like that first, <laughs> the first career I went after, I use it still to this day. I use it. We've had people come in there crying, bawling their eyes out. We've had to take people in the back room, get them tissue and really be there for them because people go through things and they come to us. And a lot of times they sit in your chair and they'll just release everything on you. Mm-hmm. Release it all. We are, we are definitely therapists. They say like your, your barber or your hairstylist and your bartender. Oh, yeah. Like they're very, (laughs) they've got these similarities. (laughs) So total switch here, but an interesting, well, I'm going to say interesting, but also tragic piece of your story, but has also built a lot of resilience and grit. I mean, there's so much here to unpack, but, you know, you mentioned, and I met you shortly after this had happened, um, Mm -hmm. and you had mentioned you're a gun violence survivor. Yes. And... I met you, and I think you were, like, coming from physical therapy. Yes, literally. I was leaving physical therapy, coming to meet with you. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And we had tried to connect before, and I think, like, you, I think you told me you were emailing Jenny, who works for our team, like, from the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, this is a time to say no and just right. turn your phone off, you know? But walk me through the impact that has had on your business, because it all kind of came collided. Oh, my God. Right around the beginning of... Of getting the new building and all of that. Yes. Yeah, so it was. I was. It was. Um. I was six months old as a new business owner. Um. Being you know solo with no partner, and I ended up going to a birthday party after hours, and it was this woman who was a friend of a friend. So I got invited through a friend, 
And um, we ended up going to the party, having a good time. It was cool, but we ended up leaving early. While we were walking out of the door, bullets literally came flying out of the door. So when I actually got hit and shot, I was already outside. I was already outside. So it was traumatic. Everything about that was a disaster and a nightmare. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. But to speed up the process a little bit and tell you how it influenced and has affected my business, it most definitely has affected my business in a weird way, I will say, for the better, mm. only because I feel like being a survivor has drawn more people to me. More people who are like, wait, what happened to you? What? Mm-hmm. How did you survive that? And I mean, half of it could be inspiration. The other half, of course, could be just people being nosy. But mm-hmm. but no matter what, it is bringing a, a light to it because it's it's helping everyone in my business be like, wow. Even when they have bad days, they're like, yo, we haven't been through what she's been through. So let's keep on, keep this grit growing, keep, keep this grit going, keep mm-hmm. grinding hard, keep working hard because staying focused is important right now. So a lot of people have come to me about, not in particularly my story, but just about my faith and how strong I have been through the process. And it's just interesting to a lot of people because I'm still a light. I didn't give up. I didn't say F everything or, oh, my God, I'm just depressed and down. Don't get me wrong. I've had my days. I have definitely had those days. But you can't spend too much of yesterday and today. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've, I've had to toughen it out. But it has drawn a lot of people to my business for the better. Mm-hmm. So getting back into working was a little challenge for me because I had to relearn how to walk. And I had to, like you said, go to physical therapy. And physical therapy was like three to four days a week for about three months. Mm-hmm. It, I, I am, I try to call myself a soldier because I did not, I didn't sit down too long. Once my mom and dad and my wife and everybody was like, yo, okay, come on. This is what we got to do. This is what the doctor said. They were making sure I was listening. They were on me like, nope, can't eat that. (laughs) Nope, can't drink that. Nope, can't do that. Got to move your legs. Got to move your arms. Got to do this. Got to take your meds. So they, my support system has been everything. They have helped me through this whole process. But once I got back up and was able to walk comfortably, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going back to work. I got to go back to work. Like, I can't sit in this house all day. This is not for me. I'm, I'm a busybody. I want to move around. I want to do things. I want to get stuff done. So it's been a disaster, but it has been a beautiful butterfly that stemmed from it. That's a great perspective. Thank you. Thank you. When, when that happened, you're six months in. Mm-hmm. What happened to the business until you came back? The people who work there, Neek, my wife, Trail, well, Aaliyah, Trail, they really, really held it down. Now, do, throughout the process of me being gone for five months, I had other people who were working in the shop who ended up leaving and going to do their own thing. So it ended up being just my wife, Neek, and Trail, the two barbers, and Aaliyah, she's the licensed cosmetologist. So just trying to connect the dots and stay. Mm-hmm. But they held it down. They held down all the advertising they held down uh updating my clients on what was going on with me they held down taking care of my clients they had held down making sure the building was clean making sure the towels were washed making sure i mean the front of the building was clean like they they really held it down they took care of it and i i just i can't thank them enough for five months they they didn't call me if the building was burning up they put the fire out so so it was it was a blessing for real they held it down that's very unique mm-hmm. to have a team and so early on in, you know, in the business. W- what do you think it was that was it something you guys had been working on in those first five, six months that helped bring the glue and solidify? It's a pretty big disruption to oh. have the business owner out and literally out. Yes. I feel like what it definitely was the glue. But I feel like before this happened to me, I already had been preaching into them like, yo, Next year's big for us. We're going to be elevating. We're trying to get more people in here. I've always been that business owner that I'm not only the business owner, but I also work here with everyone. So I'm not coming and going every blue moon. I'm here with y'all. We are sweating together. Blood, sweat, and tears. We're doing this together. There's been, I, don't, I don't walk around saying I'm the business owner. I work there too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it was something that I always preached into them still to this day. I still have the same energy behind me where it's like, We are all a team. We're in this together. Let's make sure that we are taking care of our clients. Let's make sure that we're having team meetings. I'm just, I hate to say that I'm on a monkey on their back sometimes, but I know that I can be 
but I know that they know it comes from a place of love and wanting them to succeed and wanting them to be booked up and wanting them to get decent money and be able to take trips and vacations and just take care of themselves. I feel like they know my heart was in it. And if they, if I would have just had a relationship with them that was just blah, or they just was like, oh, this is just a person who's here for money. She don't really care about the business. I don't think it would have survived at all. I don't think so. But I feel like it was something that I preached into them beforehand. Yeah. Really casting that vision. Mm-hmm. Having the buy-in and... That's huge. Oh, yeah. You had mentioned before the interview here in some notes just about something you're interested in other business owners knowing is how to be prepared for disaster, I guess we'll call it. Yeah. <laughs> for a disaster, for yeah. a catastrophe, for an unexpected you know, instance that trauma. comes into your life, a yes. trauma. And I feel like that can run the gamut, right, of, I mean, we hope for sure that people don't go through something like that, right. being shot. Yeah. But it can run the gamut from something debilitating where you're physically taken out to it could be other types of trauma. You're building floods or something happens in your personal life and all of a sudden you're pulled away to care for an aging parent or there's so many things that can enter our lives. How can a business owner prepare for disaster? Oh, my God. Um, I'm going to start off by saying financially. Be prepared financially. Financially, save, oversave, and oversave that savings. I know when you're a business owner, you have all these expenses at home and at work. It is hard to save, but just as much as we can get money to do extra activities, we can get money to save. Make sure you're insured. Your business needs to be insured no matter what. Your business and your life. So you got to have business insurance, life insurance, and make sure that you have a savings. I feel like with those three things intact and really like solid solidified like save up three to six months worth of expenses now I was not a hundred percent prepared I'll be clear with that Mm. um I most definitely thank goodness thank God and my family they were able to help me out financially and I started a GoFundMe once everything happened to so there was a lot of people who I've never even met who were donating to my GoFundMe because of the cause but I was definitely covered with my insurance and my health insurance That is something that I have been on. It actually started with this new business. So within the last year is when I really got on insurance because insurance has a lot of loops that will get you covered through things like this. So sit down with an insurance agent, figure out what type of investments can help you if you have a disaster. If something happens, if you have to take care of a parent, if you have to go part time, cover yourself like for real. And it's sad that it has to be financial as the biggest thing. But like you said, it can be something that's debilitating like you have to be able to cover your expenses. And if you can't, sadly, you can lose a lot of stuff, especially when you're a business owner. So being prepared financially, being in, being prepared and having insurance and just cover yourself. Be prepared for things like that. I will say before this, also on a different level of being prepared, I am not new to disasters. So I've been in therapy for the last two years. So being prepared on a mental health level was something that I was, I did a lot better than I expected. Mm. So seeing a therapist, talking to somebody who, you know, could walk me through and talk me through and help me emotionally through this stuff is something that also helped the recovery process. So being prepared mentally and emotionally is big. I'm with you there. And that is a, you have to start that before it happens or if you've had a traumatic experience you need to start that and then continue absolutely because it's like well appropriately right where people say when you go for a haircut schedule the next one before you need it right like you're like being ahead yes but it makes me think yesterday um, a panelist was sharing and and he was sharing dig the well before you need to draw the water Mm, you've got to be digging that well and then you can draw the water if you need water today it's not a great day to be digging the well right and that really stuck out to me with what you're saying i I thought it was pretty good too yeah dig the well before you need the water absolutely so as we're kind of wrapping up here although i could probably i say this on every podcast people everyone who's listening are like vivian you say this every time i know i know i know but we could talk forever there's so many things absolutely When you think about your business and everything that you've done so far and where you're at, what do you love and what are you really proud of as a business owner? Oh, I love, I absolutely love the fact that I, first off, that I am a business owner. 
Um, I love that. Both of my parents are business owners and they really preach that into me. So I feel like it's like a a proud of me moment, like, you know, making my parents proud moment. Um, I'm also proud of the relationships that I've been able to maintain throughout being a business owner. I have had some relationships that I had to give up on and some that I had to build on. But I'm very proud of having the discernment and being able to see like people who really are there and people who are not. So I'm very proud of being open minded to accepting that everybody cannot go with you. Everybody who seems like they're on your team today, next week they might not be. Mm. But I'm proud. Oh my God, the hardest. I mean, we're talking about direct blood family members that I have been like, I'm. I just can't. You've done me wrong so many times. I have to stop. I gotta cut you off. I gotta move on. And I gotta. But what's crazy is once I've decided to acknowledge that and accept that within myself, it wasn't as hard to move away from the relationships. So I'm proud of my business. I'm proud of my relationships. And I'm just proud to have the team that I have for real. Yeah, they sound awesome. Oh, yeah. They're bomb. They I are bomb. I got to meet a few when I was there. Yeah. They all sound pretty amazing. <laughs> they are. They are. It's a very unique bunch, for sure. All of us have had our own traumatic experiences in life, and all of us have had... You got to get one of them out here, too, to tell you their story, because you'll be like, wait, what? You went through what? Like, it's it's some crazy stuff. But I think that all in God's timing, everything is planning out how it needs to. It's awesome. And it's beautiful to watch. Slowing down, saying no, in yes. timing. I- yes. <laughs> Slow down, say no, and prepare for disasters. That's the one right there. Yes. <laughs> That disasters thing, it really reminds me of Michaela and I. We started Tandem Works in September of 2019. Oh, COVID. Yeah. <laughs> and we, so we were a baby, baby business. We had owned businesses prior. So we had that under our belt, kind of like you. You'd done mm-hmm. things prior. And one of the things we did is we started financially right from the bat with very little money to really save, but we started building that in right away. And a lot of people struggled understandably through that time and I'm not going to say it was easy but because we were already in that mindset it made it easier because we were sort of putting this catastrophe plan in place granted like you we weren't very far in so we didn't have a ton built up yet right but we had some and it gave us the right mentality of the mental piece Mm -hmm. and that was one of our big things as we watched other business owner friends who basically just they went to the couch and were like life was over you know yeah yeah and to some very to the extreme and one of our things was we're not going to let that happen to them and we were doing we were calling people and (laughs) what do you need and let's get you you know online someone to have an online presence and like let's just make sure that there's good energy going because that is key there absolutely absolutely what you put in is what you get out for sure all right i've got a couple rapid questions Rapid fire questions for you. All right, let's do it. Make sure you can get out of here because I know you want to be on time. All right, bet. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. So what would you say is the biggest misconception about owning a business? Ooh, the biggest misconception about owning a business is that it's something that everyone can do. Mm. Now, it is not for everyone, and that is okay. Mm -hmm. I know during COVID it was highlighted that everyone should own a business, go out there and get a business, save up, do this, do that. But no, there's paperwork. And more paperwork. <laughs> There's money and more money. There's organization. It's kind of like if the building is burning down, they're coming to you. Mm-hmm. If the building floods, they come to you. If they need tissue paper, they come to you. Mm-hmm. It's like being the mom or the dad of a business. And it is hard and it is a lot and it's not for everybody. And it's okay. Everybody's not made to do that. And it's fine. Yeah, I love that. I love the idea of everyone owning a business, but I'm with you. It's not for everyone. But sometimes you can look at it and go... Maybe it's not for me, but I want to go be part of that one over there. Absolutely. Build that business owner up. Be a part of that team because Mm -hmm. I love what they stand for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. What's an important piece of advice that you have been given and you've actually applied to your business? Ooh, okay. Um, So I listen to Eric Thomas a lot, Mm -hmm. motivational speaker. And the, I mean, the advice is miles and miles long. But one thing that always stands out to me is a famous quote he's famous for. And it's, if you want it as bad as you want to breathe, then you'll be successful. So it's about being consistent. Yes, being consistent and chasing what you want, no matter what. If you want it as bad as you could breathe, think about it. If you're suffocating as bad as you want to breathe, if you want that business, oh, you're going to make sure that it stays afloat, no matter what. Right. 
that's definitely a conversation I've had to have with myself and others. And sometimes I've had to say, I don't want that thing that bad. Yeah. And I'm going to let it go. Yeah. And it's okay. Yeah. For real. All right. What would you tell your 18-year-old self knowing what you know now? Ooh, go to barber school now. (laughs) (laughs) Go to barber school now. Um, Do not waste your time trying to chase what you think a career is, but spend your time acknowledging what your talents are. So instead of you looking at the world and saying, well, you can be a lawyer, a doctor, a psychiatrist, a police officer, instead of looking at the world as if how they label careers in real jobs, look in the mirror and say, yo, I'm actually good at painting. I'm actually good at sewing. I'm actually good at making music. Chase after what you're good at because your talent will make a way for you. I'm with you there for sure. Uh, Just for fun, what's your favorite kickback and relax beverage? Oh, kickback and relax beverage. Mm -hmm. (laughs) For fun. Um... Kick back and relax. Dang, you put me on the spot right here. <laughs> I'm going to go with an alcoholic beverage, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say Jack and Coke. All right. Yeah. Nice. Yep, nice. yep. Kick back and relax. You don't need much. Just drink your one and sit back and listen to some music. Yeah. I <laughs> wondered music is going to be in there. Yeah. I can picture you listen to music and then deciding what you were going to yeah. have with that. <laughs> Absolutely. So speaking of music, is there either a song, a book, or a podcast that's inspiring you right now? Oh, Eric Thomas again, You Owe You. Mm. Yep. And Steve Harvey, Key to Success. Love it. I'm actually reading both of those at the same time. I got to stop doing that. But (laughs) Steve Harvey. Right. (laughs) Steve Harvey, Key to Success is a ride along book. So you go back and you check your goals and you write down how you're going to get to those goals. And I just love the organization of the book. And it's for, I mean, somebody who's 10 could start reading that book and writing their goals Mm -hmm. and still could have a guide on being success. Eric Thomas, you owe you is about the life of him coming from being homeless eating out of trash cans to becoming like one of the number one motivational speakers in the world. So it's just watching someone go from nothing to something, the inspiration and drive behind that. You have to be bold to live a life like that. So You're right. it's all about inspiration. I love it. I love that too. Since you are a music person, any favorite songs? Ooh. Or anything you're just kitten repeat a lot on your playlist right now? It's so hard for me yeah. because, yeah, because I'm such a, I, I'm a music head. So I love music in general. Like before I came here at the shop, I was playing Jamaican music. Just a random spin of DJs in the world who go on YouTube and record Jamaican mixed music. And wow. just the beat and the energy behind that is like, it keeps you up. It gives you energy. It's positive. It's always something that sounds fun. For me personally, I like soul music. Mm-hmm. So like Tim's, Blast, Giveon, Coco Jones. I mean, these are all like people who sing with their soul. So when you listen to their music, you're like, wow, she's really in love. Or, <laughs> or wow, he really loves his music, his art. You know, and it's always a, um, some type of nice beat to it. It's got to have a nice groove. Mm. Just something I could listen to at home, in the shower, or in the car. Mm-hmm. You know, I need a... I need a yeah. Yeah. You would think I was a producer. I tried it, but <laughs> I, tr- I tried it. It didn't work out for me. But I have a friend right now who is so dope in music. I tell him all the time, like, you have to perform. Like, every time he opens his mouth to sing, rap, show me his beats, I'm like, yo, listen. Yeah. You got it. Like, for real, you're playing. Listen to the advice I would have given myself when I was 18. Thank I'm you. I'm telling you, let's Come do on. it. Do you want it as bad as you want to breathe? breathe. <laughs> <laughs> for real. That's absolutely. Good. All right, last two here then. Three, actually. Here we go. (laughs) What excites you most about the future? Ooh, what excites me most about the future? Traveling overseas, Mm. leaving the country and traveling, meeting new people. Um, That excites me more than a lot of things, honestly. Uh, With my family, with my wife, of course, my loved ones being there, but traveling, traveling. And I just, and a part of traveling is also with my team from the shop, going to barber shows, going to barber conventions, going to... You know, hairstylist competitions, stuff like that. I'm just, I'm a traveler. I love to travel. I could leave right now. <laughs> Same. I'm itching to get out yes. camping. <laughs> like we're ready to go camping. Yes. All right. What is something people often get wrong about you? Ooh. So, um, ooh, come on. Something people often get wrong about me. Or that they might not know about you. Something that people, oh, I could, I could say something that people don't know about me. It's crazy. Um, I have saved two people's, no, three people's lives. Literally. 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 
My mom was one, and um, the other two were kids at the facility I worked at. One of them was on the roof, claiming to jump off, mm. and it would have been if he would have jumped, it would have been it. And he called them and told them the only person he would talk to was me. I think I was all the way out in Lincoln somewhere. He was in Omaha. I drove all the way back and stood outside with him and just talked him down. And my mom, it was crazy. She was, uh, my reflex is what saved her. She was tripping and falling, and she has this fireplace that's all brick. Ooh. And right before her head hit the corner, my arm, I don't, listen, I'm, I'm a firm believer. I just think it was God. My arm just reached out and literally grabbed her head. Wow. And it was like right here above the brick. And it was the corner like this. If her head would have hit that, it would have been it. So you're also a guardian it. angel as well. Oh, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly chosen just yeah, a little bit. I don't know. People have told me that when I was younger, somebody told me that. You're different. You're different. You're touched. And I just ran with it like, maybe I am. <laughs> Maybe I am, but it's not an easy life to have. If yeah, I'm, you're like, I'm just doing me over here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, please know I have enough going on. Why do you keep showing me things? It's it's crazy, but it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It is. It's beautiful. All right, last one then. What can business owners specifically do to make the world a better place? Oh, they can work directly with other businesses and understand that by working with other business owners, it's not taking away from your business. If me and you both have a barbershop and I'm on block A and you're on block B, by us working with each other, it's not taking away from our business. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's good. It's almost helping. So now you have two shop options. Now you have two different shop owners you could talk to when you need business advice. Now you have two different locations. If this one can't get you in, this one can. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in Omaha, a lot of times businesses don't support other businesses because they fear competition. Absolutely. There's a million people in this world. Yeah, there's plenty of pie for everybody. That part. So much pie. That part. Everybody can get a slice. And then if we're done with the pie, we can move on to the cake, okay? That part, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So it's fine. Absolutely, absolutely. So that that would be my biggest thing, work with other businesses. And that's something big that I'm standing on this year, working with other businesses. Absolutely. We're doing business expos. We're doing promotions. We're going to do a bowling alley thing. We're going to go and have some spades tournaments, like whatever we need to do to get connected so we can network. I love that. Well, I love that this hopefully is a piece of that. I'm just, I'm excited that you're connecting yeah. yes. with these business owners and getting to hear your story. And I just really appreciate you sharing it. Thank you. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely.